Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back. It's your boy Matt to you. And you know, going by Delio now. Nobody calls me by my first name now. But yeah, obviously I'm here. I'm in uniform. You know what that means. I passed boot camp and then I passed MCT. Now I'm at my schoolhouse. I know it's been a while. I, I've just been really busy. But now I'm back on track. Got a little bit of motivation and I'm here to give as much information as I can possible. Ugh. It's tough, but I love it so much. But at the bottom, I'm gonna have obviously the intro, which is going on right now. And I have phase one, two, and three, because in boot camp they split it up by phases. And I'm, I'm gonna give you my a quick, detailed experience of myself. And obviously, everybody has different experiences, but I'm gonna tell you mine. Whew. Let's let's get straight into it, and I'll give you all the good gist. Okay, guys. So phase one. This is your first time going into like a new environment. So like for me personally, the first week is called receiving week. It's where they, they break you down. It's where they, um, they, you have to give all your stuff. You step on the yellow footprints for the first time. You feel so much pride because so many have come before you. And it just, it's a good feeling. It's also real. It's like when you go there, it's like, damn, this is what I seen from the YouTube videos, you know? Like they, they are yelling at me. So like, it's like, oh, like this is easy. It's what I expected, but no, it's completely different when you're really there. There's no way to, exp I can't explain it to you enough. There's no way for me, I can tell you exactly how I felt and everything. It was tough, but like, you'll never be able to truly understand until you really go in there yourself. So yeah, <laughs> it's crazy. But receiving week, for me personally, that had to be one of the hardest weeks because I, I mean, it was a culture shock. Everybody explains it that way, and that's exactly how it is. You come up in there, everybody's in civilian clothes. They say, they're yelling at you to empty all your pockets. You give it out. They throw everything that you don't need or what wasn't, wasn't, wasn't like told to bring. And then everything just starts moving. And the whole time your heart's racing, the whole time you're thinking like, dang, this is crazy. You know, you're in line for hours and hours. The first two days you get like no sleep, no rest. And that's what was so hard for me. We had to go through medical, we had to get shots, we had to, we had to do so much. And I kid you not, the whole time, I was over there, I, I, we were standing, and I was just like, like I, I would always be falling asleep. Ooh, they, they, they would call it bobbing for cock, because it's funny. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but I'm gonna say it anyways. Like, you're over here falling asleep, it's like, like, like that's, that, that's how it is. And you think you're the only one. I thought I was the only one. I was like, dang, how is everybody so wide awake? Until they sat us down at the bleachers and I saw everybody falling over. Everybody getting yelled at. It, it was it was horrible because I wasn't used to I thought I was gonna be prepared because I had an Asian mother always yelling at me at home. But when I got there, it is it is a different story. They're in your face and they spit. They're like this close, yelling full volume. It's it's really insane. But there's receiving week. They introduce you. They give you all your gear. Um, there's there's just stuff like that. And then once you get done with receiving week, then comes Black Friday. Black Friday is when you get introduced to your actual real, like, your real drill instructors. You get four of them. You get your senior. You have a kill hat. You have one that gives you knowledge. And then there's one that, te like, the, the drill god. <laughs> the one that teaches you how to drill. But... Yeah, you get on with that and it's it's insane. They have you sit down and you get in the rooms for the first time. You like again, you're like, this is from the videos. That's exactly how I felt at least. And then boom, they introduce themselves, they they tell you the swear, everything about how they swear they're gonna be there for you and they're here to teach you. And then as soon as they're done with that, yelling begins. Everybody gets to their racks and they did this all up in your face, all like, so close and everything and it's it's crazy like it's not expected but for me personally that moment i was so happy because i was like i'm really in it you know i've been so excited i wanted to join the marine corps since i was in middle school my brother joined the army my other brothers in the freaking the navy and now i'm in the marines so i was really proud of it but 
then after that a whole bunch of yelling's going on all this and that and you're like damn and then you know you finally get sleep and everything they give you eight hours sleep they give you a good amount of sleep but that good amount of sleep feels like two hours oh it was crazy and then after that they start you start doing pt you get it it if you don't know what that is obviously it's when you, you mess up or you're not listening and you're being undisciplined the drill instructors want to um they want to instill discipline into you so they can be one two or three however much they feel they need as many drill instructors as they need on you and boom you get an it oh get down oh get up oh, oh no volume you stay here a little longer like it's insane I, i'd be gassed and i like i can't anymore but you still keep going my throat's dry go i need water i need water. no they don't care you're gonna finish your it session they, you stop when they say you stop like it's crazy it's crazy i've seen people tearing up people i've seen people like i saw people quit probably like out of my we started with like 80 something we ended we ended boot camp with like barely 70 like it's, it's a it's a lot more than you think would like you think everybody would be able to make it but no people fail because of instantly because they miss home they they, they figure out this life isn't for them because it, it really is hard it isn't for everybody and i don't blame them because it was tough for me myself what else they 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 found ways to get out like saying like oh i i, I can't like they're they're fake they're just like bullshit bullshit that's what it really was they made bullshit so they can get out but i don't blame them they wanted to get out and some some a lot of people got out for dumb reasons but receiving week and then towards the end of the first phase you start doing like the confidence course it's where you climb it's called the stairway to heaven it's like 50 feet high i climb up that hole oh sorry i don't know if i i could talk like that but you have to climb all the way up and it's super high it's scary it's a lot of things that test your like it's trying to get rid of your um you know stop being scared stop stop being stop being scared this is literally what it is they they push you through so many limits you you you, you go to sleep early and you wake up four to six in the morning every every day and every day it's a hassle because you got to go to you know you got to go to chow first thing in the morning and they you have to march perfectly like there'll be things in line you're 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 going you're getting information you have to stand straight they see you scratch your nose boom you're gonna get it later you gotta be straight you can't be no a nose is itchy no you, you gotta eat that there's like uh what when you're in line when you're in line for chow you dead ass gotta like nut nut they call it nut to butt nut to butt you'll be literally this close like your nuts is literally on his butt and it was always to me like when I first got there, I was like, "Dude, move! Get off me! Get off me!" Like, I wasn't with that, you know. I don't swing that way, so I was like, "Come on, man, back up!" But if you want to, you want to act that way, you want to act up. Drill instructors get up on you. They're like, "No, you you want to act stupid," and they get all up in your face. They spit it in your face. They they blowing your eardrums out to the point where you rather just do nuts to butt. Like for real, I got nuts to butt. And I did it real good. All right, never mind. But anyways, you you understand? Like it's like that. And like when you're when you're getting food, you're literally shoulder to shoulder. Like you're you're feels like jail. Feels like jail. You're right next to each other. You gotta hold your plate like that. You can't hold it all slanted. You know, you're not back at home. That's what they will always tell you. When you're walking, you can't walk like you know. They, they they're gonna yell at you. Oh oh, you think you're back home? And then you get it. So many reasons to get IT. They'll, they'll find any reason to IT you. So be on your A game. Literally the whole time. Shift, shift. You're trying to grab some salad? No, move. Okay, my bad. And then they keep moving you on. You don't get to get what you like. And then the desserts. Whew. Skip the desserts. You don't need it. You're just going to IT more. It's not worth it. But sometimes it was. I still got, I still got my desserts. But yeah. <sighs> that's about phase one i i am confident there's a lot more this it's just gonna drag the video out for too long so if you have any questions you have my social media you have comments down below i'm here to answer everything 
But that's phase one for me, and it, it was great. I'm gonna move on now to phase two. So now you're in phase two. I'm sorry if there's a lot. There's a lot of things I'm forgetting. As, as I said, ask me. But just another quick one. Every single morning, there wasn't a single day, even when you finally become a Marine in boot camp, where you don't rip your sheets off your bed. You gotta rip it off, you got five minutes to fix your bed with your partner. Two beds, you gotta make it perfect, 45 inch folds, everything. And if you're not done, everybody's ripping it off and do it again. Again, rip it off, they do not care. You better get it done, you have to get it done. That's just another, that's just another dumb thing. And and there's, there's a lot, it's a lot of bullshit. I can't get enough of that but it's it's what makes it great okay but there's also the ist that's in phase one that's where you you know one and a half mile run i was gassed my cardio is but make sure your cardio cardio is on lockdown but okay after that there's phase two and dang so phase two swim qual i'm not I've never been so scared of water. Not because I'm, I can't swim. It was just scary. You, you sit down, you're cold, you're wearing these camis like this, but it's like oversized, doesn't even fit you. And it's already wet. So you'll be like, yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? You're freezing your butt off and you're chilling. And then you just see the water. Like you see, hold on, let me show y'all explanation. You see this? Act like this is the floor where you stand on. You're walking and then there's water right here. It's literally the same level. Like, there's no chill. It's right there. And it just looks so intimidating. I was sitting there. I was like, fuck, fuck, fuck. But swim qual, I I almost drowned one time. There, there's a four four sections. You got to test out two times. And if you, if you fail, they're very, like, they give you chances. You don't know how to swim, they'll teach you. Yes, they'll be yelling at you, but understand that it's their job. That's what they got to do. But with that, you know, you have to jump off. I don't know how many meters high it was, but when I jumped, it didn't look too high. But when I jumped, I was like, like my stomach felt like it was about to fall out my butt. But yeah, there was that. And then there's just techniques, you know, like this monkey airplane rocket. Like they teach you, they teach you these things and it works. It really does work. Frog kicking, blah, 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 this, this and that. The one where I almost drowned was they teach you how to make a floating device because you can use this to like create air pockets and stuff like that and they teach you how to do it. There's one called the Superman where you unbutton this top one, you bring it out, put it tight to your chest and you go, oh, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, I kind of forgot. But you go like, you like blow some air in there and then you put it tight to your chest and it just makes a whole floating thing. Some people had it down. I could not. And then there was this other one. I don't know which one it was called, but you bring it up like this. Obviously you have this like unbuttoned and then you blow in and then you keep it tight and you like scrape it against your face and you have this like locked up and then air will just pop up in the back too. That way you could just float there without having to like, you know, just float on your back. But then there's a test after that. You have to, the next day, the actual test, where you gotta float for like five minutes. I tried it. I was like, and I, was, I just started going down. Like, All right, so I got back up. I just started floating my back. It wasn't too hard. Five minutes, just laying your back. It goes a lot quicker than you think it would. But even thinking, talking about it, I'm, I'm like a little shaky dicky. But yeah, there's, there's um, swim qual. And then they, this is when you start to do a lot of marching. I don't remember which phase. I think I'm pretty sure phase one you already did the initial drill. But drilling, they don't they don't talk about drilling. I watch all the videos. They don't talk about drilling. I don't know why they don't talk about that. Yes, it's just drilling. It's just marching and stuff, you know. But that's hard. I mean, it's not hard, but you do it for so long. You do drilling for like ten hours plus all day stiff yeah they'll push on you a line oh, oh. yes sir and it just kept caught off guard all the time all day getting yelled at and then when you get your your weapon to do like drill you're holding it right here and okay the weapon like the m16 it's like it's not too heavy but when you're holding it like this perfect 
for hours, your freaking bicep starts to cramp up and everything. And I'm saying, like, oh my God. And like, it literally starts to get dark. And we start off in the morning and it's getting dark. And it's like, when are we going to stop? When are we going to stop? After that, all of us will be complaining and be like, damn, bro, my arm's tired. But it's a way of uh, showing discipline and it's a way to get your body to do what, even when you're getting lazy, uh, to always be still. You know, it, there's a lot of things that teach us like with combat. My my drill instructor always told me, you gotta learn to drill before you can kill. <laughs> it's kind of corny, but it's kind of lit. But yeah, that's phase two. They got some other stuff. Uh, I just need a quick refresher and I'm, I'm gonna continue on. All right guys, so I got my refresher, thought about it for a bit. And there's McMap, Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. Correct me if I'm wrong, I apologize. But that's where they teach you, you know, basic warrior stance, how to how to keep how to keep straight, jabs, hooks, all that goodness. They teach you how to do a pro proper choke hold, how, how to how to break out. Uh, they they tell you step by step, and you got to do it over and over. And even talk, like you're gonna be doing it with a partner, you got to dead ass take your partner down, you got to slam to the ground. You know, it's better to practice now than to do it all if you know. So when, when, even if it's your homie, take them down. If they get hurt. Well, don't hurt them that bad, but like, don't be like super weak with it. No, like, oh, try, like, no, like, actually try to put some pressure on them. But yeah, there's McMap, and then there is Interior Guard. So there's this thing where every, every night there there's this thing called Fire Watch. You basically have to stand every every hour. There's four people up. It sucks when you got it. Everybody complains. People try to find ways around it, but that just fucks everything up. Everybody starts hating each other. But there's this one night on phase two where people stand guard, you get gear on, you have flak, Kevlar, and you have a dummy rifle. And you're just walking around and you'll see like, there'll be drill instructors and people coming around like with scenarios or they'll try to break into the building and you gotta be on watch. That, that'll that teach a lot of like, you know, help. And that that goes in with like a lot of uh, the medical stuff they teach you. If your 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 homie gets shot, you know you gotta be able to be prepared to pull them, buddy drag them, and then do do a little bit of that, you know, heal them up and everything. And then another thing you do in phase two is your first like your physical test. It's the three mile run. I don't know how I did that. I don't. Three miles. I never ran three miles in my life to that day. I got. 24 minute flat no 24 minutes 30 seconds i know it was bad i was gassed i'm telling you but then you take it again phase three i think and then i got a, i got a 21 30 not too bad little asian man but yeah you do you got to get pull-ups and everything and that that test is just tough because like it's first thing in the morning you're tired nobody's trying to run three miles except for those people that do the gas i literally be running and I get, I'm about to make it to the halfway point, and people are just dashing past on the other side. I'm like, damn. But then I look behind me, and there's a lot of people behind me. But, yeah, just train up for that, and you, you should be good. Other than that, I'm sh I, again, I'm confident. There's a lot more stuff I'm missing. I'm just trying not to have this video drag too long out. Again, if you have questions, go ahead and shoot them. I'm all ears. I'm here to, I'm here to answer. So, with that, let's get on to phase three. So with all that said, phase three begins, and this is where stuff starts to pick up. You think it's not gonna be too hard, but it does. But there's a lot of enjoyable things too. This is when you find, if you're West Coast, I'm not too, this is, I should have said this from the beginning. I am speaking for West Coast. I am a West Coast Marine. There's East Coast, Paris Island, but I wasn't down there. So base it on how you want to. But this is when you hand up to Camp Pendleton, you know, when I got there, it was completely different because we were in MCRD, you know, something like there's buildings there at least. But once you get to Camp Pendleton, they put you, you can see miles and miles and miles and miles. It's kind of like this, but those buildings aren't there. All, there's only ranges, ranges and mountains. Flat, and then it gets far, boom, 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 mountain, 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 mountain. But that's when you go over there, you get settled down, chow's even quicker. It was already quick as hell, but now it's mad fast. There was times where I sat down, get up. I took a bite anyways, and then I get it I'd be, we'd be walking, you're not supposed to, but I'm starving. I know many other people do this, so don't get on me about it. 
We'll be, we'll be chilling, going. Hey, y'all see anybody? I shove a whole peanut butter packet in my mouth with bread. I was that guy. But yeah, you get to Camp Pendleton, and then boom, there's so much. There's a, uh, you go to Range Week. There's Range Week, Grass Week, and then there's Shooting Week. Grass Week, you're with a, a PMI. It's where the guy that teaches you how to shoot, the fundamentals and everything. I got a great guy, uh, Hen um, okay, my Henry, and he taught us the fundamentals. And basically, you have gear, you have all your gear on, and they teach you how to just sight in, how to zero your rifle in, how to how to how to aim from the sitting position, kneeling position, and the standing position. You, you'll get made fun of over there, but. They don't play no games with them because they're gonna have you holding it like in some weird ways where your arms is getting fucked up. Uh, like they had made me hold like a Superman position, holding my finger, think like I don't even remember, but my fingers in the A frame, pulling the lever back while having my feet in the air like a duck. I looked like a fool. All of us looked like a fool because he was asking for volume. We were giving it to him, but he doesn't care. Once you fuck up, it's over. But yeah, grass week is a whole lot of teaching. And then it's uh, range week. You head over there and, you know, shit starts to get real. You, you fire. And there's there's two different. There's table one and table two. Table one is where you shoot from ranges. 100 meter, 200 meter, 500 meter, 300 meter. You, you shoot with the rifle and you got to you gotta do sitting, you know, like, and there's different positions for each, uh, each distance. I got expert, you know. You better get expert if you get pizza box which is like marksman i think and then the sharpshooter but if you get marksman everyone's gonna be clowning you you don't want to be that guy they call it pizza box because the metal you get is literally shaped like a pizza box they call you dominoes and everything but you know expert it looks great uh yeah so that's table one you shoot from a distance on like like you're steady though but table two is when you start like you're closer up like like 100 meters 50 meters and it's like uh, control, period, contact, bring it up. And then they teach you how to do, do, do. And then freaking speed reload. Uh, ready, move. And then you, you wait for the contract. And if you mess up, you can't mess around with rounds. You're going to get messed up. Like they put a, uh, they put a safety belt, a glow belt on you. It's like a yellow strap. And that just gives all the drill instructors a reason to fuck you up. But yeah. Table two is where you just, you know, bang, bang, bang. And then you do tactical reloads where you take the mag out and you don't drop it instead of like, like in, compared to a speed reload where you just press it and it drops and then reload. But yeah, they, they teach you how to load fast, blah, blah, blah. And that's range week. And then after that, they take you to field week. I think around there is when they do the gas chamber too. Let me tell you all my gas chamber experience real quick. Gas chamber was scary. I, I was, it was cold too. So, oh, I can't talk like that. But I was cold and I was scared. A girl, a female instructor was telling us how to do it, all this. And I, gas, gas, gas. I, oh my, all right. I'll say that in a bit. But you had to put the gas on quick, blah, 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 this, this, and that. But when we finally got up there, we got into the room. Everyone did like, you, you put the gas on before you enter the chamber. I thought we were gonna put it on in there. But you get in there, you put it on already. And you just see everybody. It's just a small room. It's probably like 30 people in a circle or like against the walls. And you have a partner. <sighs> My partner almost killed me. We were in there and then you're just chilling. And then they twist it and you see the gas go up. And they come with sticks. And they wave it in your face. They're like, all right, now shake your mask. They want you to shake it. And then they go up and like, shake it harder. That way, like little bits can sneak into your mask. And I was trying to be slick like, Acting like I was doing it. Nah, they grabbed my hand, they're like, shake it. And I was like, you got in. I was like, <laughs> I, I try to, I try to act more hurt. I'm not gonna lie. That way they would leave me alone. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> but like, it was burning. I was like, Fuck. but there's this part where you gotta like change the filter. And when you take the filters out, you can't breathe. You can't. My partner took it off and I was waiting. I was he's trying to put it on. And he's like, all right, breathe. They're like, <laughs> like put it on put it on he put it in and he was struggling i couldn't breathe for like 20 seconds we were about to call the instructor but he got in as a <sighs> but it was burning too so it was all insane and then towards the end there's a part where they tell you to take it off 
and you could choose whether or not to breathe in or not. But me and my homie were doing it. So I was like, let's do this, let's do it, let's do it. So then they said to the left or whatever, and that's when you break it off, you break the seal. I broke it off too early. So I I endured it longer. But I ripped it off and like I looked at my homie. I felt it burning my eyes. You're not supposed to have your eyes open like that. But I was like, one, two, three, one. Oh my god, I started burning, boogers dripping out. Uh, we were all running. I was like, I was telling her, hurry up. Every, everybody's running out. As horrible as it is, that was a great experience. All of us came out. I was trying to laugh, but I couldn't. All right, my bad. Totally didn't run out of space on my iPhone. But about 20 minutes after that, it was all fun to get. Like, it was still burning. You can't touch your nose. Anything's going to burn more. But we were all happy. Like, we were like, dude, that was insane. We talked about it all night. Like, hey, bro, how'd you do? How was your gas chamber experience? Like, everything's an experience. Everything's good because you're with your boys. Something that y'all need to learn, something you need to get with, is that you got to stick with your homies, you know? They're, they're what pushes you or, or, or your lady friends, you know, or your homegirls and everything, you know? Everybody there is there to support you. They're your new family. They're the people you're with for three months straight, taking butt naked showers, eating chow together, every little, every single meal, marching together, going through thick and thin, everything. Be there for each other, they'll be there for you. Support each other, help each other out with everything. But yeah, that's, that's that. And then field week, you know, it continues on and they teach you to sleep outside for the first time. And you go on, you start going on vicious hikes, vicious. Like the mountains are like, goddamn. <sighs> I don't even get me sorry, I don't even wanna think about that. I hate hiking. It makes, I can't say that. It's tough. Okay, let's fast forward, boop. Crucible. The crucible is three days. You know what, I'm gonna cut this right here. I'm gonna make this another little section because the crucible is its main part. All right? All right, guys, so the crucible, three days of hell. Three days, three days of hell. It really is that. You think about everybody uh, all all time, every time you're at church, every time a new week passes by, every time you get to a new phase, you're always thinking, oh my God, this long, this long this, this long that, until the, until the crucible. And it finally came. And everybody was like, bro, you got a pack on your bag that weighs like, they say it's 80 pounds. now, that's like 100 plus. Because I carry other things, you feel? It is not that heavy. My, I got back problems. You got to make sure that thing's on right. But there's just so much. Like, you got you to gotta ask me questions, and I'll tell you personally how it goes. But it was tough. We literally had, all right, leave me alone, all right? I didn't do the Reaper. It was not my choice. I wanted to. I saw the mountain. I wanted to do it, but we couldn't because safety hazards. That's how bad the weather was. We didn't do the crucible. We didn't do the Reaper, but the crucible was done in a weather that was devious. It was insane. We were literally in a like a rainstorm. People got hypothermia. People, people. So many people were breaking their legs from slipping and stuff. It was insane. People got heat case because it's so cold. You don't want to drink water, but you got to stay hydrated. You want to pound as much water as you can. It's insane. So like first day, like I don't even know. There's so much that happened that I don't know what happened. Like there's there's hiking and on. You're, you're doing uh, your log drills with your homies. There's parts where there's three platforms and you got to jump and grab a rope and you got to work with your teammates. There's, there's parts where there's like you, you gotta, they make scenarios up where like you're you're all running and uh, someone gets shot. Boom! You have a stretcher. You gotta carry your homie out while people are providing security, all with gear. And you gotta run up hills with people on. My sergeant told me to get down. He said I got shot. Little guy, like man's ooh, damn. Man's was like this tall. Had to carry me, my fat ass, up a hill, and I was falling asleep. I was like. I was like, you got it, man. But he was carrying me. All I heard was, uh, uh. all right, my bad. I'm not going to keep doing that noise. But he was struggling. But he pushed through, you know. You got to. But there's that. There's the hikes. We did a very, very long hike. That's what we did instead of the Reaper. But it was, like, muddy. So each step, like, the mud was caked up. Here's my shoe. And it caked out, like, this much more with mud. Like, it was just, like, sticking out. It stuck to my foot. There's a whole blob of mud it was like clay mud i had to throw those boots away 
But what else? What else about the Crucible? There's there's just so much. You you only get MREs. You get like you get like four five MREs. I was hungry. I was like, hey, can you give me an M and M? They're expired. Expired. It was like it's 2022 at the time. It's 2023, obviously now. But when we got them. I looked at that, I was like, mm, munching on this. Someone said, bro, these are expired. I looked at it, 2020. I was like, bro, but nobody cared. It was delicious. Bro, oh, I'll trade Twizzlers for Reese's. Someone actually traded me that. Who likes Twizzlers? I'm sorry if you like Twizzlers. But yeah, there's the hikes, there's that, there's land nav where they drop you like you're in a desert. And I saw like a bobcat. Or something. It, it, it was something dangerous. And I saw a rattlesnake. And I tripped on barbed wire that was rustic. There, there's just too much to explain. But I'd rather just give y'all what, what to expect. And what you should do right after this part. But that's that's the crucible. All, all I can say is it's insane. And no matter what I say or put out to you guys. You'll never be able to understand. Until you actually do it yourself. That's that's really that. If you have any personal any questions, I can answer them. If you ask me a question, I'll, I'll know. It'll click in my mind. But there's so much that happens. Every single day, there's something crazy going on. So, yeah, if you have a question, I can answer that easily. But let's get on to what y'all need to do. What's, what, what's going to help you best? Tips and tricks or whatever. You feel? <laughs> all right. And so, we come to the end. We're done with all the phases. And here, here's just a little bit of... Um, you know tips I have for you personally that'll help you get through boot camp because it's not an easy task It's mentally and physically hard for me personally. I would say it was more more mentally But some tips that I have is uh, one Pound in a lot of water, you know They, they keep saying drink can 12 canteens I don't know who really does that but you want to make sure you're at least drinking a good amount of water sipping 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 like as much as you can the water's gonna be nasty. Oh, ah, I didn't even. There's the see. There's so much that I forget about because so much happens. But it's nasty. But drink as much water as you can because you don't want to be the guy that gets heat case and they stick something in your ass. I seen it. I seen the guy's butt cheeks. But yeah, you don't want to be that guy. You you want to stay hydrated so that way you can perform your best. You want to outperform your peers. You want to be the best. You want to be on top. You're in the Marines for a reason. You came here to be the best. So, you, how, how are you going to join to be the best but don't want to be the best in the Marines? You know? I tried my best, but I couldn't be the best. I was the best in my books. But, yeah, pound as much water as you can. Another tip I have is go to church, even if you don't believe in God. Or if you don't believe in anything. Just go to church. Go with your homies. Go with who you think's cool. Go with who you like. You know? I can't, I can't stress that enough. It really did help. Like, we started singing songs, like... This song called Waterfall. Everybody like, oh my god. And everybody be like, keep my eyes above the rain. When oh, all right. Oh, Oceans, not Waterfall. It's called Oceans. My fault. And there's a whole bunch of church music. I was singing some country church music. And then everybody comes up to the front. And everybody's like holding each other. And like, and you know, it's a vibe. You, you get to decompress. It's the only time you do. Because right after that, you're drilling. Right after church, you're drilling. And if you don't, you stay back at the house. Just, oh, do something productive. But if you're being dumb over there, you, you can't you can't chill over there. And then they go, oh yeah, you're doing nothing. Clean clean the bathroom, clean the head. Oh, what's that? Fix the racks. Like, don't skip out on church. Go to it. I'm telling you, I can't. I really can't stress it enough. Go to church. Uh, I'll come back with another tip. Mine's not working right now. I'm back. Thought about it. Another tip I have is bring hand sanitizer. They give you it, and you better use it. Cause oh my god. You get sick. I'm Asian. My house. All right. Never mind. You're always clean. Always got to be clean. My household is spotless all the time. But even then, when I go out and I go to a dirty environment or like everything, I'm a clean guy. I always stay away. I always wash my hands, everything, blah, blah, blah. You can't. All over there, everybody gets sick. Even I was doing good with my hygiene. I was I was putting my hands in. But you want that for yourself. I'm telling you. But... They give you masks and everything, but there's people that be lazy, like, oh, I'm just trying to breathe, man. I'm like, bro, come on. Well, we're in line, they're like, <coughs> I'm like, dog, can't do nothing. Because if you throw a, if you throw a punch, you're out. You're going to get NJP or whatever. But 
Yeah, bring hand sanitizer. That way, if they give you some snacks or a, a, a sack lunch, it's called bag nasties. Must got like sandwich or whatever, no mayonnaise. But they give you that, and they give you that food. You don't want to eat with the food you scratch your ass with, you know, or, or the one you're you're on the floor sitting down. You get up, get down, get up, and like you know, you're touching the ground to get up, you know, or whatever you're doing. You're shaking your homie up, and he probably touches ass, you know. It's nasty. You want to stay clean, stay hygiene. And God's sake, shower. There were some stinky ass people in my platoon. God damn. Like, you can't be smelling like poop. If you smell like poop, people aren't going to like you. Believe it or not, you don't want to smell like poop. Wash your butt. I, if you're watching this video, dog, like, I know you know me. Like, I'm sorry for pointing out. This guy that literally showers like this, man. Like, he put the water on his back, hands behind his back. So this shower's right here. Like, literally just, like, going up and down. And then he's done. Like, bro, all you did was let water run down your ass. People don't know how to hygiene. Make sure you learn how to hygiene. I know you. I'm not. I know you know how to hygiene. A lot of people know how to hygiene, but keep people in check. Teach people if anything. You're gonna be with them. You have two minute showers where everybody has to get like a hundred guys have to get through sixteen shower heads. You're gonna be close. A dick might smack you. Ass might go back on you. Anything goes. But yeah, that's that's. That's another tip, hygiene. One last tip I got for y'all is go for the leader posi leadership position. Goddamn. Um, I was squad leader, you know, it was great. You wanna be a guy that way you can get a promotion. But, you know, I lost my squad leader position. I had it for like a month. It's cause, I don't even say I wanna say what I did, but it's cause I saluted inside without a cover. Yeah, 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 whatever. It was pretty dumb. I didn't know. I truly didn't know. My senior seen me and he said, yeah, you're supposed to be the epitome of perfection. You're not squad leader no more. You're fired. I was like, damn. I put so much hard work in. But, yeah, go for the leadership position. Get uncomfortable. This is what you came to Marine Corps for. Like, that you're already in boot camp. You're already as comfortable, uncomfortable as can be, you know? Take another step. It'll only better you. And if you lose it, so what? At least you're, you're the one taking a step further as compared to your peers. There's a lot of people that are going to be scared. Don't be the one that is. All right. You want to push forward. But, yeah. I'm going to get started with the outro. Not too much to say. All right, guys. Well, there there you have it. That's my boot camp experience. Next video, I have my MCT experience. Marine Corps. A Marine combat training. That was wicked. But it was easy, but wicked. But boot camp. There's a lot. I can't stress this enough. There's so much more. If you ask me a question, I'm here for it. Like, I, I can remember if it clicks in my head, but boot camp was tough. I hated it. I did. I hated it. But once you get through, you love you look, you look back at it and you think about how much you loved it. I would never want to go back. That's the thing. I love it so much. I would never regret it. Like, if I could go back in time, I would still do that. I wouldn't change my path, you know? I'm so glad that I joined Marine Corps. Like, it's a love-hate relationship. You hate it because you're lazy. Or or you just miss home, you know? But, you know, if I wasn't here, what would I be doing now, you know? Maybe college, but then I'd be in debt. And it's just too much for me. I'm over here, I'm over here to get yelled at and become more disciplined and become the best version of myself. But for boot camp... It was great. It was an experience and I loved it. I loved every single bit of it. Everything was so new. Comfort comfort zone is gone. Like like I'm I can do anything now. That's what I feel like. When I when I came out as a Marine, you know, I, I didn't join the Marines to think, oh, I'm gonna be better than everybody else. You should not if you're joining for that reason, that's that you shouldn't change change your mindset. You join to better yourself and to help and protect, you know. Yeah, that's just how it is. But that's 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 really about it. That's my boot camp experience. If you have any questions, please comment down below. If you enjoy this, please leave a like, subscribe. Subscribe. I'm sorry if you are uh, the wind's coming. I'm in 20 chicken nuggets. I didn't say nothing. But yeah, leave a comment, subscribe, like, you know, vibe with me. And I'll, I'll be back with an MCT experience. And after that, you know. I'm gonna get more and more and more in, you know. Good memories and good help for the community and the world, you know. Hoorah. But yeah, 
that's about it. Stick with me if you want. As I always is, as it as I always say, it's your boy Matt to you. Peace.